Hi. Hey there, everybody. Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Todd Knock, professional comic book artist. Maybe you've seen my work in Spider-Man, Deadpool, Young Justice, Teen Titans, and most recently, Gwen Stacy from Marvel Comics currently going on now. So, today, as we continue our post-it pop art art live streams, we're going to draw Donatello on this 3 inch by 3 inch purple post-it note. I chose purple because his mask is uh, most often purple, so I thought that would be kind of fun to do. And I don't often get to draw the Ninja Turtle, so I thought I would draw currently my favorite Ninja Turtle. Um, let's see. So, yeah, I'm doing this series. If you're new to my channel here, I'm doing these series of live streams during this coronavirus uh, social distancing sort of lockdown just to, you know, keep content coming up on my channel. Hopefully uh, inspire some people to draw. Young, old, draw whatever you can. You don't have to draw on a post-it note. If you want to draw on a post-it note and join me, please feel free. Draw in your style, your way, with the tools you have. Crayons, pencils, ballpoint pen, watercolor, oil paints if you want. If you want to sculpt it with clay, be creative. Just come and have some fun with me. So let's flip the camera around and let's get started. To drawing. So, using my trusty rusty Uni Kurotoga .3 mechanical pencil with HB lead. And we're just going to get things started here. So, um, Ninja Turtles are an interesting shaped critter. So, I'm going to try to get that classic Ninja Turtle head shape. It's almost kind of like, kind of starting with a gumdrop shape. And bisecting that center line for the, uh, down the center of the face. So his face is turned a little bit to the right. And then halfway from the top to the bottom will be the eye line. We're just gonna kind of sculpt this out and adjust it as necessary. The Ninja Turtles tend to have kind of wide set eyes. So I'm gonna start to drop those in there. I'm gonna kind of flare the cheeks out a bit. We're just gonna kind of scribble them out more and more until we get the, that uh, right sort of shape or the shape that I'm looking for. We have a little bit of almost kind of like a snout, so we'll kind of rough that shape in there to kind of give us a guideline. Kind of get a mouth going there. So since I roughed out that kind of snout, nosy sort of part, even though I won't use all these lines, this sketch line kind of gives me an idea of the shape. And it'll really come into play when it's time for colors. I like the gap tooth Donatello. I think that was a fun touch they added to him. So I'm gonna I'm gonna incorporate that gap tooth look. And we got his neck. So going to angle the neck back here a little bit so it looks like his head's kind of coming forward. Just kind of give some movement to a, to a headshot here. We're going to have to work in this mass so we kind of arc it to the brow. Bottom of the mass kind of coming, coming across here. And give some distinction to his brow. So I get really scratchy at first, as you see in my videos here. I just want to break down the shapes, really get an idea of, of what it is I'm trying to draw here. These are not the final lines. This is just my step towards the creating the final art. And we got the front part of his shell here, that yellow kind of underbelly part. Shoulders and then his shell behind him there. And we have that strap for his bow staff. So I'm gonna work that in there and we'll have the bow staff kicking up Right there, so we have the, the the grip tape right there, and then 
the wood texture right there. Let's see. I want to draw the the back of his the tie of his mask, but we, since we have a lot of elements going on over here, we're going to pull the tie of his mask coming down on this side, just so that we have some elements, costume elements coming on this side, because otherwise we have the strap, we have the bow staff, we put the, the ties over here, that would be so much over here and so little over here, so I think it kind of balances things out a little bit if we put the ties kind of dangling down on this side, gives us a little bit of Use up a little bit more of that real estate. A little shadow underneath the chin, uh, chin there. What, what passes for a chin for a Ninja Turtle? Gonna flare out these cheeks just a little more. Where's my click eraser? I have, ah, oh, there it is. It's underneath the gel pen. Just going to kind of take out some of these lines so it's a little clearer for me to see for inks. So just as I sculpt with the pencil, now I'm kind of reverse sculpting with the eraser. I just made up that term, reverse sculpting. I don't think I've ever said that before, reverse sculpting. So, I think we are good to move to inks. So, starting with my Micron 08. It's the thicker point micron to get my initial lines and contours and shapes down. I can go thick to thin to a degree with it. By the amount of pressure I place. When applying the nib, the little black point of the pen, the nib, to the paper. So the harder I press, the more pressure I put on it, the darker or thicker the line, and the less pressure, the thinner the line. and line variation can give us a sense of depth and lighting. Darker lines can be convey more of a shadow. Darker, thicker lines can convey more of a shadow. Thinner lines can convey more of where the light is hitting the object. Thicker lines can move, move things towards the foreground where thinner lines can make things look further in the background, like they're further away. So these are some of the thoughts that I have when I'm inking. Where is the light source? And where, where is everything? Is it in the foreground, or is it in the middle ground, or is it in the background? And sometimes a subtle, even just a subtle variation of line can create um, can create depth. Just enough depth to uh, give whatever element you're drawing a little extra pop, a little extra for the viewer eye to play with, what we often call eye candy. Those little lines, those little details that the eye, the viewer's eye can, can bounce around from one element to the next. These are things I think about on a regular basis, whether I'm drawing comic books or a fun piece like this. Whatever illustration I'm doing, these are things that will come to mind. Shadow underneath his chin there. So we have a lot more black there, but it gives his head some pop off of his 
uh, neck. So it's created a sense of depth. We got some thin lines there to show the folds of his uh, band, uh, mask tie. A little thicker line there to show it overlapping the other tie. So th those are the kind of things I'm referring to. These are the things to think about. You think about each little section, each little element. as you go. And just think about what is overlapping the other thing. Let's see, you hold the pen so cool. Yeah, a lot of people ask, now this is the traditional way we're taught to write, but sometimes I hold my pencil like this. And people ask, why do you hold your pencil and your pen on your ring finger? What is the purpose for that? There is really no purpose. I switch between the two uh, because both feel comfortable for me. This was the bad habit I learned in first grade. This is how I learned to write, by holding my pencil wrong, incorrectly. So there is no secret trick as to why I hold my pencil like this. It's just what felt right to me as a six-year-old, a seven-year-old. So, um, and it just kind of stuck with me for the rest of my life. And so just depending on the angle that I'm drawing at, I will, I will uh, switch back and forth between the two... Um, the two techniques, the two ways of holding my pencil. I guess in a sense it kind of is, gives me the control I need for the angle that I need, for the technique that I'm doing, I guess. But yeah, there's no secret trick. I was not taught to hold my pencil that way. In fact, if anything, my teachers were trying to get me to stop holding my pencil that way since it was an incorrect way to hold a pencil. But so in some ways I did learn, because as you see here, I'm, I switched to holding my pencil like, or my pen like this. But then you'll see me switch back. And it's just, it's involuntary. It's just like so ingrained in me. I do it, <laughs> I do it without even thinking oftentimes. I don't even realize I'm doing it. I've done it this way for so long. Like see, I just switched again. <laughs> thank you for the compliment. Thank you that you think this is cool here. So all these little little tick marks here are for a reason. Like it's to show a fade and I curve around that that rim of of Donatello's shell. These lines curve with his uh, bandolier strap, his shoulder strap here, to show the curve of the shoulder strap. It's not, the lines aren't thrown in in any old which way. You want them to conform to the shape of the item that you're illustrating so that it has reason and shows the shape or lighting, things like that. So. They're not, they're not thrown in haphazardly. I try to be as thoughtful as possible so that they serve a purpose. Let's get his mouth going here. Let's get those teeth. with that gap right there. And we got the tongue, we'll show his tongue. 
right there underneath. Oops, sorry. Let's see, how many different colored Post-it notepads are there? Uh, I don't know. Post-it, uh, 3M's Post-it brand, they have like these different packs, like Colors of the World. There's like the, the Madagascar pack and the, uh, the Thailand pack, and they have like three or four different colors. And I've had some of those. Um, I probably have maybe, I don't know, almost a dozen different colors, different shades of blue, gray, purple, uh, green. So, um, yeah, I, I just, you know, whatever I can find on, on the Staples, at the Staples store or on uh, Amazon, that's where I get my Post-its. And um, I prefer the uh, Post-it brand Post-it, uh, Post-it note, just because I have found a pretty wide variety of colors. I found a teal, and uh, I'm sure we'll see more of these colors in future, future Post-it pop art live streams, depending on the character that I'm drawing. I always try to pick the color of Post-it that will complement the character that I'm drawing. Like there's a connection to that character, like red for Spider-Man the other day, or um, green for Robin because his mask and uh, sleeves were green. So okay, we're gonna let this have a moment to dry here. So let's see if I can address a question. How did I get started at Marvel? Um, I got my first start by showing my, um, my portfolio to Marvel editors at comic book conventions when I was younger. And uh, an editor gave me my first um, assignment um, back while I was still in art school. Uh, when I started working regularly full time for Marvel, it was because now I'm using my Stettler Mars plastic eraser to uh, gently erase the pencil lines here, very gently, or as gently as I can. Um, I had done a series of DC comics called Young Justice, which we addressed yesterday during the Robin video. Hopefully you had a chance to watch that. If not, after this video, go, go and check that one out. Um, he and I did a, a, a book, a series called Young Justice, writer Peter David. And a few years later, he was over at Marvel writing the uh, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man series, and the regular artist was leaving the series, and the editor asked the writer, Peter David, who he'd like to, uh, is, if there was any artist he'd like to work with to replace um, the artist. And that was the, the late, great Mike Ringo. I'm a huge fan of, of Mike's work. And um, one of the best in the biz, absolutely. And um, so I was, uh, Peter said, I want Todd Nock. And so the Spider-Man office reached out to me and they offered me uh, a two-issue arc, which grew to a 10-issue run on that series. And from there, I just kept working regularly for Marvel. They kept giving me work. And that's the way it's been ever since. So thank you so much for asking that question. It's a total thrill to be able to work for Marvel since I've been a fan of Marvel Comics. I've been reading them since I was 13 years old. So now it's time for some color. So let's start coloring um, Donatello here with some Copic sketch markers. I'll call out the codes. You can use whatever colors you have. Colored pencils, Crayola markers, Crayola crayons, whatever you have. I'm going to start with a YG45. Or am I going to start with a YG45? Hold on. We're changing it up. Maybe I'm going to start with a G46. Yeah, we're going to go G46 to start. I'm going to start with the darker shades first. So if our light source is coming from above, I'm going to hit all the areas that are overlapped by things or furthest away from the light source. I'm just going to sculpt the color. Sculpt with the color. Keeping in mind the shape of Donatello and his like his neck, his head, that turtley head. And I'm going to take this to a G43. Probably utilize several different shades of of green here to achieve the effect. So just coloring over the previous color to blend it in from 
what I've laid down into the open area. I'm going to come in with a completely different shade. I'm going to come in with some YG03. It's a bit more vibrant of a green, but I'm considering the colored paper here. So the, the purple of the paper, or any colored paper, is going, to, is going to change my color choices. If I was coloring on white paper, I'd probably be using different greens entirely to... Uh, render because the white is different than the purple. Then a little G40, very light, very, very light shade, just to kind of blend it all together. All right, now let's do the um, let's do his shell. We're gonna save the mask for last, I think. Um, so let's do the shell and the strap here. So we're gonna go with some. Gonna start with a darker green for the back of the shell. So I'm using a YG45. And then I'm gonna bring in that Y or that G46. That same color I used initially to start the darker shades on Donatello for the back of the shell there. Now let's see, we need some, we're going to go some E34 for the bow staff. The wood part, I should say, the wood part. I'm going to do some E55. for the shoulder strap. So as you can see, I left a little chunk there. So I just did this side and then I did this side and that, that creates kind of a, a highlight there and gives a sense of curvature to his shoulder strap. A little darker shade of brown here, pulling up from below. Let's hit that, that belly. Let's do the Y21. And then let's see, we have we'll use some warm gray here. We'll start with a start with a warm gray one for the shoulder straps. Or for not the shoulder straps, the um, the grip tape. I'm calling it grip tape. I'm not sure if that's technically what it is, but that's just what we're going to nickname it. Let's put a little color in his tongue. So that was some warm gray one I used on the grip tape there and some RV32 for his tongue. Um, now let's tackle that mask. So we're going to start with some V15. And so keeping in mind the shape of the, the brow, the, the occipital cavity, you know, the, the eye hole that um, his eyes set into and the shape around that, I'm going to keep these things in mind as to how I sculpt my color. The furrow of his brow and how this goes down to his... his snout-like area. Now, I saw someone ask the question, how do you find your style? The style really is kind of, for me, let's see, we're gonna to switch to some V04, is how do you like to make your lines and shapes? Because that's what our art is here, is, is lines and shapes. Lines with pencil lines, which create shapes, then with color I'm using shapes. Uh, shapes of color 
to blend these sections together is how do you like to, and I forgot to do the tail of his, his um, mask here. I need to do the V15 there. So it really is how do you like to create your shapes? So I always say we don't find our style, our style finds us. Draw the way you like to draw. Draw the thing, things you like to see. And just kind of, it's going to, I believe, going to happen oftentimes more organically. Sometimes when we try so hard to find our style, it frustrates us because we compare our style to, or the style we want to our favorite artist styles. And um, so it kind of starts off as a hodgepodge of our favorite artists. But at, as time moves on and you learn more about your art, you start to develop your own style through your own art processes. Processes? What's the correct plural there? So, uh, so that's my that's my opinion. Don't try too hard to find your own style. Your style will find you. Just draw. Just draw the way you like to draw, and learn things, and that's going to change the way you draw. And you're just going to grow and evolve as an artist, much like we grow and evolve as people. So a little V zero one there to kind of blend all that together there. All right, let's see, I want a little darker warm gray over here on the, uh, now that the ink is dried, I see that the, the, the grip tape has lightened up, so I want to just add a little bit darker. So I come in with some warm gray too, right there. Actually, a little bit more. Actually, now that I think about it, I should use my same trick I do for the eyeballs. So we're actually gonna make this grip tape even darker. Warm gray four. I'm gonna use some warm gray four. You're probably saying, Todd, that's too dark. Madness, it needs to be lighter. It will be, it will be. If you weren't here for my Spider-Man and Robin uh, post-its, then you're about to see a trick that I utilize all the time. And we're gonna do this, use some cool gray five for the eyes. You might be saying, but Todd, that gray is too dark. It is for the moment. We're gonna use it for the teeth as well. like, but Todd, that looks weird. Yes, yes it does. But I come in with my white colored pencil. Any white colored pencil will do. Now I'm gonna color over that and it's gonna lighten that gray up to just the right shade of gray. As if I were coloring on white paper. Do the same for his eyeballs here. You saw me do this trick for Robin yesterday. Like I said, if you missed my Spider-Man and Robin live streams the past two days, then uh, make sure you check those out. Now, because I want almost like a white here for the grip tape, I'm going to lightly color some white over that. And it makes it fairly believable. Now, I need to bring in some realistic shadows here on Donatello, so we're going to come in with some... Cool gray five, I think is what, ooh. Everything's sliding off my desk. What's going on? Uh, some cool gray five, uh, cool gray three. I'm so sorry, cool gray three. Just gonna drop in some, sculpt in some shadows here. Definitely underneath that chin, the far side of his face. So as you can see, as the cool gray mixes with the other colors, it creates kind of a nice, believable shadow. Almost, almost realistic shadow. Right there on the cheek there, boom. It just kind of sculpts a little bit of shape to the cheek. Now mind you, this takes a lot of practice. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of practice. So keep drawing whatever you're drawing, keep, keep studying, keep training, keep trying, because that's what I've been doing my entire life and hope to continue to, to do for the rest of my life. Let's continue to draw, have fun, discover new things with art. So still using this cool gray three.
All right, now let's put in a little bit of a background here, a little background fade like I like to do. Um, so I'm thinking, let's try neutral gray. We're gonna try the neutrals. So I'm gonna start with a neutral, we're gonna start pretty dark with a neutral seven. I'm gonna do all the odd numbers. So we're gonna start with a neutral seven. We went pretty dark because, you know, he lives in a dark sewer. So just cutting in some swatches like that. Power down to the neutral gray five. Hopefully I said neutral gray seven and not cool gray seven. I use cool gray so much, any gray I use, I, I end up saying cool when I might mean warm or neutral. So we're doing all neutrals at this time. Um, so neutral gray seven to the neutral gray five. And then from the five to the three. Finishing move is coming up next. Y'all know what my finishing move is. Neutral gray three, and then a little neutral gray one just to kind of fade it out. That's right, the white ink is the finishing move. My Uniball Signo white gel pen. We're gonna go around the perimeter of, of Donnie here and wrap this up. I do like doing the white outline, which I butt right up to that black line, not over the black line, just right up to the black line. To get, I like this white line because I love the pop. It gives the the character off of the the um, the paper and the background too. So I go right up to the to the black line because I don't want to lose that black line. I want to try to maintain that shape as best as I can. So a little bit more here. And there we go. Let's see, could I show you all of my post-it note drawings? Um, I can't, uh, I can't physically show them to you, but I can invite you to go to the Art of Todd Knock Facebook page and I have a whole dedicated post-it note uh, album. In, in the photos on my Art of Todd Knock Facebook page. And I, I have pretty much every single post-it illustration I've done on there. I think we just cleared 400 post-it notes over the, the years that I've been doing this. So now I need to put my signature on here and the date. Which is, what is today? Today is the 19th, the 19th. of March 2020. And there we go, there's Donatello. So much fun to do. I don't often get to draw Ninja Turtles. So it's a real it's a real fun treat to get a chance to draw a character that I, I, I enjoy, but don't often get to draw. So this was definitely a, a fun, something fun and new and different for me. So um, let's flip the camera around here and we'll, we'll sign off. There we go. Let me plug back into the rig. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, everybody. There we go. Thanks so much. I hope you had a good time. Here's Donatello. I will be posting him on my social media, so make sure you look me up at um, on Instagram or Twitter, I'm at Todd Knock on both of those, or the Art of Todd Knock Facebook page. Uh, you can give that a like and follow, and you can see all of my post-its in that one dedicated post-it note album. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you had a chance to draw along with me. If you do, make sure you hashtag it. 
uh, post it, pop art, and tag me at Todd Knock so I can see it. Um, and um, yeah, I hope you had fun. And like I said, if, if you're just now tuning in and you want to draw along, feel free to draw along. Draw whatever turtle you want. Draw on post-its, draw on your sketchbook, draw on a McDonald's Playland placemat, whatever it is. Uh, but draw on appropriate things. Don't No, no graffiti people. Uh, let, let's, let's be good people out there. But uh, draw on our appropriate paper. Um, uh, so yeah, or even, you know, lined school, school uh, notebook paper. I, had, I did so many notebook paper drawings as a kid. My, you know, that margin there, I'd fill it up with, uh, with doodles um, uh, when I was in school just because I always had to be making marks. Um, so yeah, gang, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Hope you had a good time and hopefully we'll see you again really soon, maybe as early as tomorrow been trying to do these every day or every weekday at 9 a.m. and we'll try to keep this going for as long as we're on the coronavirus social distancing lockdown. Um, hope everyone's staying well, staying safe, keep washing your hands, um, eat right, get good rest, and let's stay, let's stay well, and let's try to have fun through this time. Thanks so much for joining me. Keep on drawing, keep having fun. I'm Todd Knock. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.